Greetings from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This is a first time for me. I get to sit down with a master blender and it is none other than Mr. Francisco Armante from DBL Cigars, which stands for Dominican Big, Big Leaguers. And we're gonna get a little bit into that here with this interview with you. First off, I wanna thank you so very much for one, coming to our beautiful city of Gettysburg and for taking the time to sit down with me with a crowded shop waiting to see you and talk to you and you're willing to take the time out to sit with me. It really means a lot to me, so thank you, brother. As soon as our job is a passion and something that you really enjoy is not a job anymore. Well, that's so true. I really enjoy what I do for my whole life. Cigar means a lot to our family. Uh, I'm the third generation in my family, and only one job in my life, cigars. So this is what I love, this is my business, and this is what I want to end my life doing, enjoying this beautiful business. And it is truly a beautiful business, it really is. Um, so, one of my first questions for you is, how long have you been in the industry? That's a good question. <laughs> Imagine in the living room, my dad, he was the owner of Cigarro El Rey, the king. It was a local brand in Dominican Republic okay. that we supply cigar for mini market, supermarket around the coast in the north. Imagine mm -hmm. in the living room, my dad early at the 80s, he started the business. He worked before for La Aurora, when La Aurora was La Aurora, that you need to know how to bunch the cigar and finish the cigar by yourself. So instead of now, you see people that made them bunch and a cigar roller that finished the cigar. Correct. No, at that time, in the 70s, to go to La Aurora, you need to know how to bunch and how to finish the cigar with the wrapper. So oh. my dad was well, one of the best rollers in La Aurora, and then he decided to own his own factory. And in the living room, he don't have a lot of resources, and he started in the living room making what we call in Dominican doggy, little doggy, which is a, like a Corona cigar that he okay. doesn't use mold. This is cigar, the, cigar, the more popular cigar that we use in our country uh, back in the day. And I start with him. At the age of seven, I begin getting in love with cigars and until now, my whole life, 37 years. Wow, that is awesome. Unbelievable, but you know, in my town, we have two passion, cigar and baseball. I was gonna say, it's gotta be baseball, it's gotta be So, or you become a good baseball player or you be in the cigar industry because most of the 80% of the, of the income in Tamboril, Tamboril is a town that belongs to Santiago okay. de los Caballeros. Santiago de los Caballeros is the second more important city in Dominican Republic and, in, and is located in the north. So Tamboril is the capital of the cigar rollers. There is no town that has more cigar factory than Dominican Republic exclusively in that town, Tamboril, with only 95,000 people. And we have over 157 cigar factory. Can you imagine that? What? Yes, sir. That many factories you, with that little account of people? You can see people in the patio, in the backyard making cigars. It's just unbelievable. Every corner there is a cigar factory. So we crazy. Cigar is part of our culture. It's part of our life in that town. Well, thank God you do it because I'll tell you what, I enjoy them. I guarantee you that. <laughs> thank you. So you've done a, you have a cigar that you specifically named in honor of your daddy. Yep. Would you like to share with us a little bit more about that? Yes, the first cigars that, that we released uh, with our company, before that I worked with, after I I finished working with Fuente in 1996, 
Yeah, because nobody knows who Fuente is. Right? Yeah, yes, everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we we uh, finish uh, working with Fuente uh, uh, late in uh, nineteen ninety nine. Almost five years working with Carlos Sino and Juan Sosa in the facility number four in Fuente, Fuente Factory. My old brother used to work with in the facility number one. Uh, he was a control quality of the Opus Eds, Don Carlos, Hemingway, Martin Almonte, and and I was working with Juan Sosa in the facility number four, training new cigar rollers and and all the department, I, I begin learning from sorting, uh, fermentation, packaging. Then I begin learning about uh, uh, blending and training new people. So that was my, my one of my beautiful uh, days back in the day with getting experiences for one of the more popular guy and famous, simple guy, really nice person with a big heart, Don Carlos Sini. You know, I gotta say, I've watched several videos and interviews with the Fuentes and without ever meeting them, you, you just fall in love with them. Like they just, they have a way of pulling you in and making you feel like family. Just as you did tonight with everybody in this room. Cigar is like that. I don't know if there is another business like I come to this place the first time and I get immediately a good touch with the people with a nice conversation. That's I don't know if there is another business like that, but this is what I love cigars because you get good relationship with great people. Absolutely. It's no matter, you, I can work in construction making $10 and you can be the vice president of the big company making a lot of money. But as soon as you go into a cigar lounge, everybody's the same. Everybody respect each other. Everybody love each other. And this is all about, the life is to relax and get nice relationship. And that's what you get in this beautiful business. And, and that's what we got from you tonight because from the moment you walked in the front door today, you were hugging people, you were, the, the first thing I noticed about you was your smile on your face and you just had that aura around you of joy and happiness. And that immediately lit up our whole shop. And I'll tell you, I wasn't even sitting down half of the cigar that you rolled for me today. And I wasn't even halfway through that cigar. And I already heard multiple people go, when is he coming back? <laughs> when is he coming back? This is, so, this is uh, uh, most of the time it happens. Cigar is, is to have a great moment. So it's not a job. This is a hobby for me. This is something that run into my blood. Tobacco means a lot to our family. Imagine 68 members in my family that know how to roll cigars. Imagine that I'm the third generation, only job, cigar business. Yeah. Imagine, imagine working with one rollers in 2013, that I take this challenge to build my company and go Vegas, Nevada, without any booth, just bringing some sample and give it to the people. How, that was the way how we start. Yeah. We our company. I'm very happy that today we are making half million cigar. Imagine that. It, it's about if you do something with love and passion, you have a lot of probability to get good resource in the life. So you better enjoy what you do and never is gonna be a job. And that's what I'm doing in my life. I don't have a job. I enjoy every second, every moment. We can spend day talking about cigars. If you talk to me about baseball, yes, I can spend a few days too because this is my passion. 
Right. And this is what we love in our country. Cigars and baseball. Well, they're two beautiful things. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that. They're two beautiful things. <laughs> so now, <clears throat> in your lineup of cigars, you have a couple of, you have a line that has been named after some professional yeah, I, I, players I put, from the Dominican. The first line was the uh, honoring my dad because the, the factory name was a Ray. So I decided to release the Havana. That was my first line that I released in 2013. But because we love baseball, and that's why our name, Dominican Big Leaguer, because something that we are big and proud to do is baseball and cigar. I'm not saying that the brand is related to baseball. I'm saying that we have passion for those two things. Sure. And then I released the Maduro line. So that was honoring big baseball player in the major league. For example, El Grande. Who is El Grande? Pedro Martinez, Hall of Fame. He played with Montreal, then he played with Boston, Philadelphia, okay, Mets, and he he was one of the best pitchers of that uh, in the nineties. Oh, definitely. And and every time I saw this guy pitching, it was one of my best moments ever. You know what amazed me about him is when he was in Boston, when they would go to New York. The New York Yankee fans would purposely chant his name <laughs> to try to get to shake him, and all it did was make him better. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, all it did was drive him to be better. And and, and that was why I put those names. The Atomi Ant is a short cigars that I relay and I honor one of the best baseball players in Dominica. He wasn't very popular here. But he was one, I can say the number one baseball player, Luis Polonia. He played with the Yankees. And the and uh, he, Los he, Angeles, I mean, the Oakland A's. Exactly. And he was one of the best. So because he was a short guy, I make a short cigar honoring him. And I call a Tommy end. If you go to the Little Bull, who is the Little Bull? Little Bull is a, is a short cigar, 54 ring gauge by four inches. Honoring whom? Who is the little bull? Manny Ramirez. Manny Ramirez was the little bull. The machine. He's still playing the machine. Who is the machine? Arbe Pujol. Okay? Do you remember those days with San Luis? Oh, my, yes. He was a monster. He is still a monster. He wants to World Series. And, you know, he's, he's, we are very proud of him. But what about, what about La Flecha? We call Fernando Rodney because every time he closed the game, he made yep, like a yep. Okay, so we honor we put that name honoring him. So that was honoring people. The B Poppy. B oh. Poppy, we made the B Poppy honoring Davy Ortiz. You know, I can say the full name, but I call how they call it, the nickname B Poppy. I put the B Poppy making, you know, a, Wonderful Maduro Toro side for him, honoring him because of everything that he done. And you know, another thing about those guys, and Manny did it, Albert Pujols has done it, certainly Luis Polonia did it back in the day, yep. and also Big Poppy has done it. Yep. They are all, and they still continuously talk about how proud they are to be from the Dominican Republic. Absolutely. And, and then I came up with a with a formula. We, we released the formula uh, five years ago because we, we have a Havana, we have a Maduro Mexican rapper, honoring baseball player with Nicaragua and Dominican. But then I said, oh, I need something more spicy and peppery. And I decided to, to release the formula. Formula is because everything that you blend is a combination of different tobacco seeds different tobacco from different country. Right. As soon as you mix it up something, it's a formula. 
So I released the formula honoring that, that everything in the light that you mix it up and it has at least two ingredients or in, in the cigar business, at least it has two blend, it's a formula. At least it has two can of tobacco, I mean. Right. So when you mix it up, at least two can of tobacco or more, you get a formula every time. When you mix it up like Cameron Rapper and, and, and Piloto Cubano, Corojo 1999, you're making a formula. So I released an Ecuadorian Song Ground Wrapper with Peruvian binder that I love Peruvian tobacco. It's really good. And I mix it up with a Corojo 1999 from our tobacco field. And it's unbelievable. People love it. And the more, the more crazy thing that I did in this business, I got one guy called Mafu. Everybody say he's a crazy guy. He, he smile all the time. Everybody love to talk with Mafu. Everybody love with Mafu. Everybody love him. So he go to the factory. He clean the factory. He clean in front of the factory. He clean the bathroom. He don't want money. He just want cigar. He want cigar to smoke. So I said one day, you know what, my food? I'm gonna make a cigar honoring you. So I released them my food. And most of cigar blender, this is important. They blend most of the time a Robusto or a Toro side. Yes. I decide to make opposite because if you blend a big side first and the people like it, it's more easy to blend a smaller side. So I release a A by 60 Cameron and Maduro for the first time Pennsylvania filler and Dominican tobacco from my field. Believe it or not, we got 98 rating at stogypress.com and this is one of the top source cigars that we have. Well, I bought one of the Mafus today. I bought the Maduro. The Maduro. So I'm anxious to try it. And um, I will say this. So far, the Amarillo. The Amarillo. The Bellicoso Barber Pole has got to be <laughs> one of my favorite cigars Thank of you. this year. Thank you. That was the one of my last release that I did because I never blend in my whole life any Connecticut cigar. And I said one day, I, it's a challenge for me, I want to make a Connecticut wrapper with flavor. Why? Because the Connecticut don't get a lot of fermentation process. It doesn't age too longer because if you age in a high temperature in fermentation, is gonna change the color. So to keep the yellow color, you can make a deep long, you can make a big pie of tobacco. You have to make a small pie of tobacco because if you put a lot of pressure and a lot of weight, then with, with the humidity that the tobacco is gonna increase the temperature and then the color of the wrapper is gonna change. Remember, you have Maduro wrapper because you get mature in the field. You get a scudo wrapper because stay longer in fermentation. Okay. Oscuro means dark. Correct. So as longer you keep the tobacco in fermentation, you get more dark. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. So the Connecticut, you can keep for long time in fermentation. So I said, I'm gonna the only wrapper that is colored yellow is Connecticut. So that's why I put in Spanish Amarello. That means Amarillo. It means yellow. Okay. So I put Amarello line. Okay. The Amarello line, I decided to make three sizes. It was a challenge for me. So because it's too, too difficult to get some sweetness for the Connecticut, because of the lack of fermentation, I decided to age in wrong cask. So I aged the wrapper in wrong cast. Wrong cast is made of sugar cane. So I bought some butter, some cask, 
and I in, put humidity inside the cast and or, or the smell of the aroma of the sugar cane rum come through the wrapper and that make a bit different. So when you smoke one of my Amarillo line, you can taste the sweetness, the smooth of the tobacco. Oh, that's fantastic. You don't find any bitterness. And then I said, I'm going to make, I'm going to put some accent, some Maduro accent to make a little more sweet. And that when I make, it was a challenge. Imagine making a bellicoso, press, and then put some Maduro accent from Mexico. Imagine that. So you get more sweet. It's a very balanced cigar with a lot of flavor and perfect draw you can get in our cigars. And most of our press cigar is on, always the construction is there. So that's what I focus in a nice construction hmm. because something that I learn is as soon as you buy a cigar, if the cigar is tight, you have to throw it away. So you better make a good draw cigar. So I'm, I, I have, you know, I take very seriously the contraction of the cigar. Um, most of the time, it's one of our priority to make a boss press cigar. We have to make sure that the drop is there. And that's why we released the Fancy Velicoso. Believe it or not, it's the number one cigar source that we have. It's the number one, the top source cigar that we have in the Fancy Velicoso. And I never expect that a Connecticut line gonna be the top line that we have. Well, I'll tell you, the only thing that I don't like about them is when I get to the end. <laughs> because it's done. That's the only sad part about it. Also, also we release, <laughs> remember too, we got the Extra Viejo. Extra Viejo is a Maduro boss press, three sides in a beautiful humidor. We are a Piraca. Maduro, he has some uh, uh, Brazilian tobacco in Dominican. Uh, we had the, the ramen number three, believe it or not, the ramen number three, which is a, a Maduro wrapper and the second generation Cameron wrapper. I supposed to discontinue that cigars two years ago and I can. Customers keep calling me, don't put this cigar away. You have to keep producing those cigars, so that's why I keep it. In the last two years, I haven't released any new cigar because of that. And we are having the best moment ever. Uh, the company is growing. We move into our new building next uh, June, next month. And, and I hope you enjoy because it's gonna have a lounge inside, inside the cigar factory. And also we're gonna, we plan to make a daycare to take care of the, uh, of you know, educate the kids of our employees. So our priority is our employees. We don't have employees, we have family and we take care of them. Uh, also remember that we released the baseball bat uh, three years ago. Yeah. And that was a challenge that we had to make the baseball bat cigar. And we got another challenge recently that we released the pie. You know, yeah, the, pipe, yeah, the pipe's a big one now. It, it was uh, really tough for us to release the pie. Uh, it's you can make a lot of that because it's the pie is unique. Uh, my cousin is a cigar roller, so when we finish the pie, we make a design. So every single pie is unique, and you don't imagine how tough it made that. We only making twelve pie every day. So that's why I'm so sorry to all my customers that we have that they want... Uh, well, when the pipes come in here, if you don't get one when they come in, they're gone. Yeah, so they can keep in, in you know, it fly. But as once again, this is a cigar. It's not just to make quantity, it's just to make uh, our family proud of that. And you know that we have a lot of love and passion for for uh, baseball, that's why we made a baseball cigar. And with the pie, you know, it's, it's an honor to make. I have a friend of mine, he wants to make that. And uh, I have a couple of customers too that call me to make. And it was so difficult, it is so difficult to make that. 
and putting a design in every single cigar, custom made, is not easy. But I like challenge. I like challenge, and and we're doing so well with all our products. Uh, we got over 270 customers in the United States just in eight years. Only boutique. We distribute our cigars for boutique company. We don't sell cigar to a big company online. We keep our cigar boutique. That's why we do seminars. We do rolling event. And, and I, I want to make sure to busy uh, all our customer at least once a, a year. It's gonna be more tough for me because we have more responsibility, but we have a good staff uh, in Pennsylvania with Rick Evers that he covered uh, Virginia, Delaware, Maryland. We have George Mancela in Jersey. We have uh, Felix, Felix Paredes in New York. And right now, for the moment, we can get no more uh, uh, rats because everything that we're making uh, is is going. And we're getting some business in Germany. In the last three years, we, we have a, a, a good production for Germany and Africa, Congo, and Kenya, nowhere. So we are expanding steadily. I don't want to grow making million cigars uh since today tomorrow no no i want to keep increasing the production a little bit steadily every year 50 75 000 cigars is good enough every year so you can control your inventory and you can and the keep quality. the and you can keep the consistency and quality of all products yeah that's that's my focus and i'm happy since i made one cigar so People give me the opportunity to make cigars. People give me the opportunity to enjoy our cigars. And that made me proud because that keep my family, my employees, everybody happy. And I'm not pretending to make millions. I'm pretending to make every single cigar with consistency, which is the more important. Absolutely. So <clears throat> now what is your favorite part of blending? If, if, I, if I tell you that, honestly, I love blending, but I love to blend alone. I don't, I don't like to blend when, when, when the production is running. When the, the factory is off after six o'clock in the afternoon, that's my time. I love to walk in the night when, because I get in peace. And you right. need to focus which tobacco sure. you can combine. And it's like a food. It's you, easier to pay attention. And... Exactly. So you have to be, you better be focused on to make a good blend. But I always focus on the market. And then I bring that to the production. Okay. So I love to blend. My favorite part of blending is, is when when you try different tobacco that that you know it could be good for the market but you want to do it better you want to do the perfection come through so one of the problems that i have when i'm blending is my dad because he's so picky so I really, I, I'm really proud when he said something is good because it's, it's so difficult to get, yes, this is good. So when, when he gave me, you know, the approval saying this is a good blend. Then you know you got something. I think it's, I, I'm going to get some good resorts. But honestly, I like, I love to blend when I'm alone, when I'm focused on, when I try different tobacco individually and I can combine and mix it up, and this will work with this. But if I put a little more, I can get more peppery. But the market is looking for some spicy. So when you play with different tobacco, and you have a lot of a lot of uh, players in the game, you you can make you know a good blend. So I always say, when you combine different tobacco from different country, you have more opportunity 
improbability to make a better blend. People say, oh, pure. Yeah, pure is good. But when you mix it up, some tobacco from Nicaragua or from Mexico or from Pennsylvania or from Peru, Honduras, Dominican, you can mix it up and you can make a better cigar. So that's, that's the way that I like. Sure. I'm not saying that, that a 100% pure cigar is bad, but when you have different tobacco from different soil, from different climate, you can, you can get a better, you have more opportunity to get a better cigar. I agree but with that. The best part of the, of the whole process is I got in love with the production. I got in love with the people, with the marketing. But the, something that I fall in love with is when you go in the morning and you see the tobacco field, everything green, everything with life. And you come a week after and you let the tobacco like one feet, one foot and next week is three feet. And you see, wow. It's just unbelievable. When you put the seed, 45 days, 10 inches in the greenhouse, then you replant the tobacco. In 75 days, you have some tobacco seed bigger than you. That's, That's awesome. It's incredible, it really is. It's, it's unbelievable. You get in love as soon as you go to the field. And when you see the tobacco in the burn, drying out, and you get those smells. That you smell. Oh, yeah. The aroma of the tobacco. You get in love with that. You want to sleep right there. You're surrounded in it. You yeah. are in the heaven. Yeah. So this is the part that I love. I, I love plants. And I really enjoy that. I, I Do you have one, a favorite leaf to one, work with? Word. I have a lot of respect for Piloto Cubano. It's so difficult to grow. It is. You can get the blue more with the Piloto Cubano. It's not a big tobacco plant, but it's, it's rich. It has a lot, of, a lot of nutrients, a lot of flavor you can get and aroma from that tobacco. It's tough. But at the end of the day, you get good results when you blend with that kind of tobacco. There is another tobacco seed in Dominican that, that it was developed a couple of years ago. It's called T13. It is a hybrid between two tobacco seeds. And it's unbelievable, the, the resource and the, and the flavor. Always is good to combine. Always is good to, to work with new tobacco seed. But Dominican is, is, is climb, the climate is perfect. You begin growing in September, and you begin working on the field and preparing the greenhouse. It's unbelievable in December when you go, you see the tobacco. How beautiful is that? It's, it's I couldn't imagine. Yep. I couldn't imagine going there and then having to leave. That'd be my problem, is leaving. <laughs> also, something, other thing that I like to see, but it's so difficult to be, is the fermentation area. Two things that you have to keep in your mind. When you go to a cigar factory, as soon as you see the inventory of tobacco and the fermentation area, as soon as you smell, you can say they have great material to make a good cigar. Simple. If you don't see great tobacco in the fermentation area, you're not going to make good cigar. So that's, that's... That's where the magic truly happens. That's, that's the heart. That's the more important part of the whole process. Fermentation. Because if you try to rush the time, you will know. Because as soon as I meet young I made cigar with young tobacco. You will know. Because this is the way to know 
with a cigar is young or not, simple, smoke it. And the cigar is gonna tell you everything that he has. So you better age the tobacco properly. You better let the tobacco go in until the tobacco lets you know that it's ready. Not when you say it's gonna be ready. The tobacco lets you know when it's ready. When it's ready, when it's burning, when it have a good flavor, when it's not harsh, when it doesn't have no bitterness, okay? So when the tobacco is ready, it's ready. So there is no way. That's why back in the day in the 90s, there were a lot of cigar with problem. Young tobacco, simple. Mm -hmm. But you know what I like from today? We have a generation that they know what they smoke. And there is a bunch of small factory making awesome, high quality cigars. In Nicaragua, in Dominican, in Honduras, in Brazil, even in Mexico. Great people making cigars. Small production, high quality cigars. So <clears throat> I'm a little worried about about something. This industry we have in a cigar boom. People know what they smoke. But I'm worried about that there is a bunch of company increasing the production and that could be I think it's gonna be back in the future. So, I'm <clears throat> sorry, we better, we better respect the fermentation process. We better respect the production. Don't, if you can make a thousand cigars, do a thousand cigars, don't make two thousand cigars. And this is what I suggest to the whole cigar industry. We have to keep doing great cigar but we can rush the fermentation process. We have to do the right fermentation process to get a great cigar. There is no magic in this business. You have to do the right things to get the great resource. That's what I can say. And I'm worried about Asia and other country that they are smoking cigars. So the demand is getting is getting up there. Yep. Yep. So another question I have for you, probably the last question we'll have for you tonight, is what is your favorite do you have a favorite pairing with a cigar? Like when you sit down in the evenings and you're enjoying one of your blends or someone else's blends. Because I'm sure as a cigar enthusiast, you're still smoking other people's cigars as well. Believe, but, believe it or not, I smoke more cigars from outside than my cigar. Really? I love to try cigar. That's why I'm, I said before that there is a bunch of company making good job. There is a bunch of company making good job. I can say this is the best generation for the cigar business. Oh yeah, by far. But, but we have to be careful because probably in the following years, we're gonna be in trouble. So when I make a cigar, I want to make sure that the tobacco is ready to get what I want. So if you want to pair a good smooth, Cigars, I love rum. Remember, we produce in our country a lot of sugar cane. I love a, ro a lot of rum from outside and inside Dominican Republic. Okay. And I like bourbon too. I like bourbon from Kentucky, but I'm not a big drinker. I like beer. Okay. okay? And I like rum, but when I'm, I'm getting like a, a, a Cameron wrapper, which is smooth. If you go with a smooth rum, 
like plantation diplomatic from Venezuela, or you go with Brugar Legenda, he make a good pairings. He make a good combination. I like to pair with wine too. So, I, I enjoy a good wine. So I'm not, I'm not a guy that drink every day, but you know, to make social, you know, to church together, have great moments. Or when I'm sitting down in my home working on some projects, I take out, you know, a cup of rum or wine, red wine. I love a lot of wine. I like the red wine from California and I really enjoy, you know, a good wine with a good cigars. But my favorite one is with rum. So diplomatic and, and my favorite one is the Plantation 20 anniversary from Barbados. That's my favorite one. And when I take the 35th anniversary, which is Cameron Rapper, and I share with that, I'm like in heaven. I love 35th anniversary, DBR, that's one of the more popular cigars that, that we release, celebrating the 35th anniversary. I almost didn't get some of them tonight. And, and if you focus on that cigar and everything that you get from that cigar. It's a balanced cigars. It's a good complexity cigars that it has a nice transition from the start until the end. So when you share with a with a with a diplomatic from Venezuela or, or, or a plantation from Barbados, you can have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I like a good I like a good bourbon. I definitely enjoy a good cup of mud. I love a good cup of coffee with my cigar sometimes. And I tell you what else I really enjoy sometimes is a just a good glass of lemonade. In in Dominican, it's part of our life to begin a cigar with coffee, with black coffee. So in the factory, when you go to the factory, we blend a cacao and coffee at the same time. It's a blend. It's a coffee that has cacao. Black. Awesome. And you try with a petite cigars. It's the best that you can get in the I morning. I really wish that next year when we go to the Dominican, imagine, we can get together. Imagine you sitting down in the, in, in the production area, in the Galera. And you are in the production area with the people working. You drinking that coffee that we blend with a uh, atomic end. Imagine that, or imagine that you start the day with a fancy velicoso. Think about that. Oh my gosh! You're gonna have a great because let me tell you. I would never leave. Let Let me tell you. <laughs> the best moment to start with your favorite cigar is in the morning. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, it's in the morning. So after you get lunch, try this your favorite cigar. So that's why I have a, a short cigar, a petit, that I used to smoke in the factory. But I can smoke a lot in the factory because I had to try everything. But for me to make my life, my my day happy, I love coffee with a petit. You start with that or the extra viejo robusto or the petit atomia i have my day with that because i really like to relax and calm down begin the day and then you're gonna have a beautiful day so that's the way that i like to cheer coffee has to be every morning in my house me too okay me and in too. the factory you always gonna have on the table, a coffee and cacao ready to go. Because this is part of our company that we make a good coffee with a good cigar. I really wish we could get together <laughs> next year when I get to the Dominican. You're more than welcome, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanna take a moment and thank you for taking the time out to spend with me tonight. Um, 
like I said, I want to thank you for coming to Gettysburg and, you know, hanging out with us here at the Union Cigar, offering the fresh rolled cigars, which were phenomenal. Thank you. And um, I also want to thank Union Cigar for giving us this opportunity to sit down in some quiet while there's about 50 people out there still waiting to talk to you and shake your hand and get pictures with you and everything else. And um, I do want to thank John and the staff here at Union Cigar in Gettysburg. And remember that if you are interested in a DBL cigar, the link will be below for their website. Along with you can get them right here at Union Cigar in the great historical Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So, I would like to say thank you. It's my first time in this beautiful town. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, and this place, Union, is awesome. They have a great team. Um, you have you are a great people. They have a beautiful members. And I'm looking forward to come back as soon as I can. And for me, it's an honor to be tonight with you and the rest of the guy. You made my day because I met a lot of people. Uh, and thanks, John, uh, for the hospitality and. It couldn't be better. I'm really happy and glad that you have been supporting our our brand, our people, and you were looking forward to seeing me today. And we got a great moment uh, pairing some fresh raw cigar with some bourbon. Yes. And I think you enjoy. I'm really glad that 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 we have a, a beautiful night and looking forward to come back. This is just the beginning of a beautiful relationship we're going to have it together. Is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I look forward to someday, hopefully in the near future, spending some time with you in the Dominican with a nice cup of coffee. You have a second home, so you better go. If you want to go our winter time on March, we're going to be there. Why here the temperature could be around... 30 something, right? In Dominican, it's gonna be like 77, 76, I'll be around there. that. So <laughs> you better go I'm with us and have fun. So, Absolutely. so we're gonna enjoy a great cigar, great coffee, great rum, great beer, and food. So you better go with us and you're gonna see what we have in the countryside that is our reality. Okay, it's not the same when you go to the resort. Go with us, and you're going to have a beautiful experience in the tobacco field, in our beautiful beaches, in our beautiful uh, people, how, how the people is really friendly in Dominican Republic. So I would like that you take the moment and go with us next year. And for sure, we're going to have a great time together. Sounds like a plan. Thank, Thank you, you my brother. brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the opportunity. You Thank know. you. Hey, Take care, guys. Take care. Thank you. Good night.